Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to An Nasheed. I am Abdul Razak in Guta, or if you like, you can call me Razaki the Golden Boy. Pia is a kunipata kwenye Facebook, Twitter, na Insta, lakini hiyo nta kupati hapo badai. Hivi sasa, nipo na mwenzangu, ambaye ako tayari, ako mzima kama... Sijui nkwambia vipi yani <laughs> mwenye tu hapa amenimaliza yuaitwa Fatma Yakub salamu alaykum wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh asante sana kuni karibisha hapa and i'm so happy to be here in the shid show and uh, this being ramadan and um, i'm so excited that we're here to remind other fellow muslim outside there how to prepare for it mm -hmm. uh, because it's starting on monday so well I'd like you first of all to tell me, you know, when it comes to the Ramadan, yes. every time when it comes to the Ramadan, people don't understand what exactly is the meaning of the Ramadan. And it's the only month that people know, you know, and, and they, it's the only month they know about Islam. They don't know that it's a month in the calendar and all that. So Islamic month, I think uh, most of the pe Muslims people, they know about this. Uh, it is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar and it's one of the five pillars of Islam. Mm -hmm. So every Muslim has to fast on this month. Not everybody, but those people who are healthy. Yeah. I have this idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is it is it just everybody who fasts? You know, there is this crazy thing. First of all, I'd like us to talk about the crazy things that happen okay. during the Ramadan. And uh, uh, Ilambo, you've gone to fast, and in the middle of the day, you feel like umekula kama umesahau. Alafu baada you're like, oh my goodness, has it ever happened to you? Yeah, it happened once, especially during the first week, the first day especially. Mm -hmm. So una sahau, like you're fasting, so you go buy PK, like the normal day. So no no PK, and then you first eat the first pallet, and then you're like, oh, I'm fasting, and then you spit it up. I remember you once told me, <laughs> I'll be watching you, I'll be watching you during the Ramadan, so that you don't eat one pallet, and then you're saying, oh, I'm fasting. But when you forget, it's okay, that. you're allowed to continue fasting because you forget. But some people, when you find you're like, uh, when I finish Sahau, but I just Sahau no na. So I'm at home too. I'm in a new bani. Maybe I'm a peak. Can you imagine you cook all this process? You take while cooking, you maliza, you make a food, and then you start eating. I love because you maliza, you're full, and then you say, "Oh, I was fasting." Is that even? Does it make sense to you? It doesn't even sound logic. Well, it doesn't make sense, but there is this question. I think we should pose to the viewer. Uh -huh. You know, when you're ready for the Ramadan. How exactly are you prepared? I'd like you to comment on our Facebook page that's at Y254 channel. Abu tell, just tell us what exactly you have done to be ready for the month of Ramadan. And also just comment there and we'll be very glad to receive from you. So, yeah, so, you know, Ramadan is just coming up on Sunday or Monday. What have you done to prepare yourself? As the viewers also tell us, you also have to go, you've got to tell us as well. Okay, to prepare myself for Ramadan, obviously, um, I'm ready, like, mentally. I have to be prepared mentally. And also, uh, prayer-wise, because there is no point of me fasting the whole day and then I'm not praying to be pointless. So I have to like pray like the five daily prayer, even if I'm working or I'm somewhere and maybe uh, there is You're no master. You're introducing a new, a, new, a new concept here that uh, you have to pray the five daily prayers. Which exactly, is that is like preparing yourself for Ramadan. It's part of the preparation. There are some people who don't pray. Yeah, I know that. When I told you Islam or Ramadan, we only become like a faithful Muslim kufatasala and doing everything right only during Ramadan. We also have to live this kind of lifestyle even when we're not fasting. I have this Christ Christian friends of mine always ask me, uh, when you're fasting, mm -hmm. um, do you not take anything in the middle of the day? Mm -hmm. And I tell them, yeah, we don't take anything in the middle of the day. And they're like, uh, how about water? And I tell them, no, you don't take water during the day. So, and they ask you, so you fast from six to nine. I think you should make it really clear because I always sometimes find, uh, and for the sake of our friends who are non-Muslims and they're watching this show, they really would have to understand exactly what's going on when you're fasting then. You know, when you're fasting, it's, uh, when Muslims are fast, you know, we have different types of fast. 
we have the first that Christian do, and also we have the first that Muslim do. So I'm going to talk mainly on the first that Muslim do. When we fast, we do the dry fast, so complete dry fast. No eating, no drinking, it's just dry fast. So we are starting to fast from, is it dawn to sunset? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yes, that is how we fast. No taking anything until sunset. So, so you see, if you're fasting, I'd like us to talk about what's allowed and what's not allowed. It's, it's very exciting that, uh, you know, I like the way Islam is structured. You have to follow, you know, there is a clear direction of what you're supposed to do. But there are some things like uh, in the Hadith it said, among the things that are haram or allowed and some things that are not allowed in Islam, they're very clear. But in between, there is some elements of confusion here. If I may ask you, uh, and also for the sake of the viewer, uh, if I have eaten, say, meat mm -hmm. last night or in the morning when I'm taking my suhoor, alafu katikati ya siku, I just realized that there is a piece of meat stuck in between my teeth. Can you brush your teeth before you went to bed after suhoor? Or, or let's say, you go to sleep after suhoor. You brush your teeth before you go to sleep. No, you go to sleep after suhoor. No, you don't go to sleep. <laughs> like, maybe after you're done with the fajr prayer, then you can go to sleep. Well, yeah, but, but that's still not uh, allowed according to the Sunnah to go to sleep. So you want to tell me, if you wake up for suhoor at around 4.30, mm -hmm. some people, they prefer to wake up very early in the morning. Yeah. So you have your suhoor and then you just, uh, maybe you read the Quran until maybe Fajr, fajr prayer. Yeah. You, you have your Fajr prayer and then you just stay awake till, I don't know, you can go back to sleep if you don't have anything to do. That well, is allowed. The, it is allowed, but then you're forgetting a very important, uh, important sunnah here. When you are going for the fast, it is safe that you delay to take your suhoor. You don't yeah. wake up early and, and eat early and then wait for fajr and then you start, uh, you start your fast. You, you eat closer towards this, the fast that's among the sunnah. Really? So if you tell me that you go to sleep after sunnah, I'm like, okay. You know, when you, so then, when you delay your suhoor, you know some people maybe they do that and then maybe you oversleep in the process. So you find yourself maybe uh, waking up, maybe you oversleep and then you find yourself waking up during fajr prayer and you miss your suhoor. And some people, they have this excuse that when they miss their suhoor, they're not going to fast. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, you've so just it's better me. you wake up early yeah. than maybe a few minutes to suhoor. Well, yeah, you, you have a point there. So my question was, if, mm. you are, if you're eating, I mean, if you've eaten something during the suhoor, mm. and then somewhere in the middle of the day, say, during, uh, you're nearly towards the prayer, basically during the day, mm. and then you find that you have a piece of meat in between your teeth, if you, if you swallow it, and you know that you've swallowed it. Does it really break your fast? If you know. Yeah, you know you've swallowed it. And it's just, you know, it's been in your teeth for... Okay, for according to my thinking, and yeah. according to the teaching of the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, that as a Muslim, you're supposed to eat whatever is stuck between your teeth, you're supposed to remove it and spit it out. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think if you take it in, that is going to be like you... You've broken your fast. Exactly. Uh -huh. So I don't think it's allowed. But if you do it unintentionally, maybe you didn't know, your fast is still there, but if you took it in intentionally, it's going to break your fast. So in your own words, who's not supposed to fast? I think, yeah, who's not uh, supposed to fast? Who is not supposed to fast? Uh, we have our, first of all, you can say uh, travelers. If you're traveling, it's not like if you're traveling long distance, let's say from here to Uganda, not from home to <laughs> the Tao. <laughs> to Tao. So that way yeah. you, you're going too fast. But if you're going for a long distance, maybe uh, 12 hours flight or maybe uh, three hours drive, more than three hours. But you, uh, no, I mean, three hours and you're, look, you're not using an animal. You're not walking. Uh, let, let's and just say maybe five hours and beyond. Uh -huh. You're not allowed to fast. Uh, but you can pay back the missed days that you didn't fast. Mm -hmm. And also, a pregnant woman is not allowed to fast. Exactly, yeah, also, true. breastfeeding, and also, a woman was just given birth, and also... There is something I'm a bit jealous about here. Uh -huh. Why is it that, you know, when, when ladies are in, in, their, in the middle of the day, I mean, uh, how do I put it? I'm trying to find the best words. Okay. I don't want to be so, so graphic. Okay, ile time on bio. You're on the top of the month, mm -hmm. if they understand what that is. And you're allowed to go without fasting. I think it's a very important thing for people to understand. Mm -hmm. But and, and also they have to pay for it after their Ramadan and make sure that they've paid for it before the next Ramadan. So what is the issue here? Well, I'm just 
jealous that you know you will be eating and <laughs> <laughs> I'm fasting. So why are you jealous? Because they're going to pay for it afterwards, and you, you know you don't have any to you, pay. You, you should fast with us. <laughs> no, we're not supposed to fast with you because you know if you did biology back at primary school, I think you understand why they're not allowed to fast. They're exempted <laughs> from it. Some, this, yeah, exactly, and it's something that people really have to understand that you're not supposed to fast. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and also, <laughs> I think also, uh, there are some other people also not allowed to fast. Uh, I think uh, you also know this, uh, the maybe very sick people, diabetic people. Because mm -hmm. the di diabetic people, they have to take their pills, I think, every, they have like take it every time. Mm -hmm. They have this specific time during the day that they're supposed to take. So such people are exempted from fasting, mm -hmm. yeah. There is, first of all, before we continue with the sickness thing, yes. I think we have to make it really clear mm -hmm. because the, uh, of, of the benefit of the viewer, mm -hmm. why this lady who's um, at the top of the month is not allowed to fast. You know, I, I know you're a lady, you would understand it more than me, <laughs> but, I, I, but I also, w let's just put a little more information into this so yes. that we can accurately guide them into, into why they are not allowed to, they, they are allowed to eat while it's in the month of Ramadan. And the, the information basically is you're not allowed to fast during the time when you're having your menstrual cycle because when that is happening, you know, you know, all this, I don't know if I should call it sickness or the kind of difficulty that the it's lady not goes a through. Sickness, yeah. It's a process. It's a, it's a, okay, yeah, the process. Thank you for, for giving that correction. <laughs> that process that the lady is going through at that time. And there are so many things apart from mood swings. There is also, you know, just, just the difficulty that's experienced there. And I also think, should I? The body changes, and could also be right if I say that when you're undergoing this process, you have to, you're losing blood, which means you have to, I don't know, eat to make sure that you maintain a healthy, a healthy body, or sh how, should I, how should I put it? Is, is that the correct way? Okay, when the reason why a, a woman or a, a lady is not allowed to fast when they're having their menstrual cycle. It's mainly because at that time the body is going through a biological change mm -hmm. and also their system is not uh, on its right, <laughs> on its normal state. Yeah. So this lady is losing a lot of blood and then she gets so weak. Uh -huh. So when you add fasting on top of it, I think it will cause her maybe a uh, some maybe medical problems or maybe right. she might even collapse <laughs> so maybe they're being excused you know what they say that when i work in the daif yeah so they say you can just go ahead and maybe eat and uh, you retain back the blood and stuff the yeah. energy that you lose yeah. so that maybe after when you're done with the ramadan is over you can pay back these On days that you, you miss if it's five days yeah. if it's six days three days you have to pay them back it's a must there are two things that we have to make clear here. Yeah. First of all, Islam is here to make, uh, I'll just say it from the hadith, it's uh, the deen that was brought to us through Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to guide us and to also help us. And so the intention of Islam is not to make worship hard for the believers, but it's to make it, uh, to, it's, it's to make them, it understands when there is a point where you have difficulty. And so one of the difficulties that's there is when someone is experiencing the menstrual cycle or when someone is sick or when someone is struggling, it's something that they have got to understand. But I have a question about this. They say like uh, the reward of someone who fasts the all of Ramadan, like the all of 31 days, 30 yeah. days yeah. precise, yeah. Uh, you, you get all this reward. Is it the same with this lady who was undergoing menstrual cycle and she missed like few days? Is it the same with the I, I think who fasted she, like she, all she, 30 if days? If she pays for those, for those days then, I, I don't see any any difference as long as she's so paid for So we it will get the same reward. I believe so. Mashallah, that's, that's, that's how I believe. Good. And also the second thing that we all have to understand, including the view of Bhagat is that when this lady has been allowed to eat during the month of Ramadan, and in the 21st century, we always go to work and mm -hmm. we go to public places, both men and women. So, they, so if, you, if you have a reason to break your fast and eat during the day, I think it's also very important to do it in private, not in public, because it's going to mislead people about that. So when you're saying that it's good to do it in public, do you mean that, let's say, for example, I'm in town, I'm in the city, <laughs> I'm doing my stuff, and then maybe I feel like going for lunch. Yeah. I'll be eating in public at the restaurant. So do you mean I should just buy maybe takeaway and go maybe eat somewhere, hide myself and eat? 
Okay, okay. I do. Why I do should I just eat okay. in the restaurant with other people? It brings controversy, it brings confusion to people. They'll be wondering exactly what's going on. And I think it will also be uncomfortable for the lady to start explaining, oh, you know, I'm encountering this particular process. I know you will not be comfortable to explain I that. I see some people, like some people, I've seen this happening, but I'm not going to mention where exactly. Yeah. So I see this person eating and then what they do, they put up some pills there like let's say a uh, paradol just beside or maybe uh, a syrup they put it beside their table so that when you're passing by and you see them eating they'll just know ah oh, she's sick i'm oh, he's sick <laughs> so i'm not cool to say don't <laughs> yeah. okay. so you see okay so i think did you think we, these people are pretending somehow because why do you have to put this medicine there so that people can see you yeah you have just reminded me something but we're going to make it this really brief because you know we also have to go and take our musical break and enjoy ourselves a little bit but first i'm going to make it really brief mm -hmm. uh first of all you know the ayah in the quran where it says those people who are performing acts of worship for the sake of pleasing other people. Yeah. They are not pleasing Allah. And also there is this hadith which says that you will get the reward for what exactly your intention is. So it's wrong for someone to put their medicine there and start eating and so that he, when you come around it will be self-explanatory for you that this guy is eating because it's, he's sick and it's during the Ramadan. And it's, it's not correct. I think right now we should be wishing, uh, 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 people should be able to just, you know, just fear Allah to the best of your ability. So I think that yeah. if you've been eating all these days and it's just one month, uh, once a year, yeah. that which you're allowed to fast. So I think you should, you should just do it like obediently because you've been eating like all the time. Yeah. And it's not like you're not going to eat in the evening, you're still going to eat. So you should and just- And people he eat a whole lot. Exactly. exactly. So I'd like to wish you all Muslims a very, very happy Ramadan. And also to appeal to the viewers that, you know, all of you are Muslim brothers and non-Muslim brothers and sisters. We love you so much. And it is very exciting month of Ramadan. You're not excited. I'm like so much excited because this is the month that we're going to get so much reward in it. It's going to like uh, cleanse us mentally, spiritually, we're going to get closer to Allah. Exactly. So it's a very, it's a very holy month. I think we should also say to our non-Muslim brothers and sisters yeah, to join us to fast within this month of Ramadan. They're not only they're allowed not to come <laughs> and eat with us in time, but also to fast with us. Yeah, so this is a very good month where we're supposed to be very peaceful. We are also supposed to fear Allah. We're supposed to be kind. We are supposed to do every good thing. There's also, thing you're forgetting that's... this one thing that we're supposed to do the most. Uh, we I are supposed know. to read the Quran yeah, a lot. Quran. Like, we're I supposed think... to make sure, like, every day if you just read one juzu, like, every day you're going to finish it by the end of the ramadan yeah fantastic so right now we're going for a very very interesting musical break but remember to hit us up on our facebook page and tell us exactly what you think how you have prepared for your fast in the month of ramadan and for you all you can ask us questions and we'll be very glad to respond to the comments to the best of our ability but right now let's get the music don't we yeah <laughs> He's telling me it's not important, yo, he told me keep sleeping.